for 2019, 2020, because I was diagnosed with breast cancer, I filed for divorce and I had COVID. So I'm like, what kind of comeback theme is that? That's like a triple whammy. Uh-huh, uh-huh, exactly. And so I, I'm like, okay, God, you put me through a tremendous test, testing my faith, which never wavered but I feel like I've earned now this second lease on life and I'm living every moment to its fullest. Well, as you know, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and I know that this is such an important time for people to pause down and think about what they need to be doing, but also in terms of if you are dealing with a diagnosis or a loved one, um, what those conversations look like so that you can be a part of this community as well. So today I have a multimedia personality consultant and survive her who was diagnosed with stage 2B triple negative breast cancer in July of 2019. She celebrates her cancer free status as the founder of Survive Her, a breast cancer awareness and wellness nonprofit whose mission is to inform, inspire, and empower women. Lindsay Levingston, welcome to Come Back with Erica Cobb. Let's get to it because I know that you worked as an anchor, reporter, host, everywhere from New York City to Houston and Tulsa. And one thing that we say that's kind of like um, a thing, it's like, don't become the story. But sometimes becoming the story isn't in your control. So at what point did you go from telling the stories to becoming a survivor story yourself? It's so interesting that you say that because I'm, you're right, I'm just so used to interviewing others. And now here I, here I am on this side of the table being interviewed about my journey. So uh, in July, 2019, while in the shower, during a routine self-exam, I felt a lump in my right breast. It was tender, it felt like a grape. It was um, actually palpable and you could see it a little bit through my skin. And I said, that is not normal. So I immediately scheduled a well woman exam. And it was during that well woman exam that my ob ordered my very first mammogram at the age of 37. And the biopsy determined that, that it was cancerous. So I was diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer, stage 2B. Triple negative breast cancer is the most aggressive subtype of breast cancer that affects us, women of color, at a higher rate. So um, the, basically to break it down, the type this type of cancer grows rapidly. Okay. And it's very aggressive. And so it requires immediate treatment. So hopped on in one way from New York back home to Houston to start treatment and care and uh, sat down with my breast surgeon and she said we're going to do oh she asked me if I had a family history of cancer I didn't know that I did so I said I don't not that I know of so she said okay let's move on so we proceeded she said let's do 15 rounds of neoadjuvant chemotherapy which means chemotherapy that would shrink the mass lumpectomy to remove whatever's left and radiation for six weeks where they were basically zap this right breast for six weeks. Um, so midway through chemotherapy, I think around round, let's say five, a cousin on my, the paternal side of my family, who was a breast cancer survivor, alerted me to something really important. She said, you know, this runs on our dad's side of the family as our dads are brothers. I said, I didn't know that because I'm, you know, I'm not very communicative with that side of the family. Mm -hmm. She said, you need to get a genetic test, Lindsay, because uh, there's a lot of women in our family who carry the BRCA1 gene mutation. I said, okay, so I scheduled that and I had a uh, genetic medical genetic test through Invitae, which is a brand for which I serve as a brand ambassador. And through that medical test, it determined that I carry the BRCA1 gene mutation. So that completely threw a, a wrench in my plan. My surgical plan changed. So after 15 rounds of chemotherapy, I rang the bell and then I had a bilateral breast mastectomy and breast reconstruction to reduce my risk of recurrence because of that gene mutation. That gene mutation means I'm at a higher risk for recurrence, breast cancer and ovarian cancer. Right. And then Erica, it didn't stop there. I had my ovaries and fallopian tubes removed. All of this maybe within a few, uh, I, you know, I would say less than a year. 
Um, and before that, I've, I always forget to mention this part, which is so important that we as survivors, I think should talk more about. Before I even started treatment and chemo, my breast surgeon who treats me like a woman, not just a patient, she asked if I desire to become a mother one day. And I said, I do. So I was able to preserve some eggs before I even started chemo. And that happened within a week, took hormones, boom, got some eggs out. And I had to start chemo because of that, what triple negative breast cancer. So it's been a whirlwind. Wow. Yeah. It's been a whirlwind. And, you know, I share my story and I'm like, wow, I've, I've gone through so much, but I'm just so grateful and blessed to, to be here today to share and to help women on their journeys because there's so much I didn't know right. that I wish to impart and share with other women and educate them on. So when you look back on that time when you received the diagnosis, what do you know now? that you wish you would have known then? Well, I didn't know that I could be affected by breast cancer. It wasn't even a thought. Uh, Breast cancer doesn't discriminate. So whether you're black, white, Asian, tall, short, wide, narrow, whatever, it doesn't discriminate. But I I didn't think that I could be affected. Um, But what I wish I'd learned earlier in life was my family history. I'm the 14th female Levingston to have been diagnosed with breast cancer. How did I not know that? Because we're not talking about it in black Mm. families, which is why it's so important we have these conversations, not just, well, Breast Cancer Awareness Month is a great time to, to, I think, uh, prompt these conversations among family, especially your female family members. But we need to be talking about this because because we can save each other's lives. Mm. And who doesn't want to save their loved one's life, right? It's that critical. I, you know, I know a lot of survivors. I'm grateful to know a lot of survivors in that way. And everyone handles um, their stories, their journeys, their survivals, especially once you receive that cancer free notification, you know, and how they proceed forward. But you chose to use this experience as a catalyst for you to start your nonprofit, Survive Her. So, what is the mission of your organization? The mission of Survive Her is to inform, inspire, and empower women about breast cancer awareness and wellness beyond the month of October. Mm. The the spotlight is on breast cancer awareness during this month, but my mission is to talk about it 365, 24 seven, because women are diagnosed every day, not just during the month of October. And so I execute my mission through content, collaboration, and conversation. Like this conversation we're having, I collaborate with the American Cancer Society, Sisters Network, Susan G. Komen, and other orgs, nonprofits, Afropink, Pink Legacy, um, to host events, to raise money, to raise awareness, and content, whether it's through media interviews or me writing an article about my story. You know, that that's, really 360 of how it works and it's grown exponentially i launched it october 1st 2020 and it has really helped a lot of women survivors helped a lot of women well i do have to tell you that in preparation of my sit down with you i stopped down and made my appointment to get my mammogram Mission true story that makes me so happy I, when i hear women when women tell me that yes i'm so glad you did that erica that means you're prioritizing your health you're prioritizing your breast health even more important yeah and you know i i appreciate that i just you know i'm, I'm doing my research and my deep dives on you <laughs> you know, all, all the survivor and everything. I was like, okay, I am such a fraud if I do not. And I just sat down. You know, practice what you preach. I or- was like, I am not going to be a hypocrite. Not in this moment. I know how important it is, but you know, everything right. people got so rocked over the past year and a half and things that we used to do regularly or, you know, we've come up with. It's just not the same, you know? And so I am one of those people, I am going to be very honest about that. So if you have been someone who's had this on the back of your mind, as I have for months, I need to get in for my mammogram, then let this be your reminder to make your appointment for your mammogram. Make that appointment. Two takeaways, get your mammogram and schedule a genetic test. Well, there's no excuses. Um, we've given you so much information. Lindsay, what you are doing is 
I mean, it's just incredible. This happened, your diagnosis happened in July of 2019. Like that was just two years ago. And look at everything that you've accomplished, both health wise, but as well as your advocacy work. Like it is truly, truly amazing. And we are so proud of you. So I just thank you for spending a little bit of time with us on Comeback with Erica Cobb. It was my honor. Thank you again, Erica, for having me. Thank you. And come back community, Lindsay Levinson. First of all, if you're not following her, make sure that you follow her and also get more information on Survive Her. The full podcast will be up on my online home, comeback.tv, where you'll get more information about Survive Her and Lindsay. So check it out. Oh, 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 o